Welcome back to the Scottish Tech YouTube channel guys So in this one we are going through to Euro Central We've got our ABS fault in our trailer So when you go through there, plug that in, see what is up with that The eagle eyed viewers, you'll notice We've got a Scottish Tech hat on We have two of these I'll show you them in detail when I stop driving So anyway, let's get on the motorway Go through to Euro Central and see what is up with this trailer Just here to do a defect on a trailer Gave the old bus a wee clean yesterday It survived its first run it New sticker on the back door Thanks to Andy, the only way it's trucking But uh, aye, anyway ABS fault So let's get this plugged in See what's up with it so, First step is I need to plug my screw in here in So that top was 24 volts So we need our gel test box There's a wee tip for anybody See if you get a, it's just like a wee extension piece, so you've obviously got your female male. You put that in, it means that if you ever damage pins, all you're doing is going to damage the pins on that wee extension and then it saves you having to buy a new lead. Here's a good wee tip for you, but anyway, so we need that and we need a bit of a trail. Now, this might be hard to do one handed, but basically, that goes in there, and then our ABS Susie goes. In there, so that's any mother hand that plugs in there like that, and then we get our VCI, which is here. Try and not get it covered in grease, which is always a hassle. But then, oh, one sec, uh, we plug that into there, like so. And in here, we turn that to on and Pluck it to single test ABS. As you can see, we have a fault. Now, I don't know if you can see, but we've got the blue light on, which means we have power to the VCI. Now, my next step is to identify what ECU is in it because it doesn't auto detect for a trailer. So, I just roll underneath, check what ECU is it. I'm going to guess it's a Haldex Gen 2 or 3, but we'll roll under and we'll have a wee quick look. Alright, so there it is there. It's one of the Haldex ones. So we'll go back to the computer now, we'll turn that on and we should hopefully be able to talk to this thing. Now we've got our computer out, so our tablet. Just going to load up the gel test system then out and I'll show you how to go into it and then find out sort of what trailer it is and then go and get your faults. So we have a trailer. We want to go to manufacturers, Haldex, and then I think it's the second gen. Could be wrong, we'll find it. In fact, no, it's the third gen. So hit connect, that should now say please wait, connect in, and then once it connects it should bring us to the menu. There we go, so we want to go to fault code reading, and while that's reading the EC, oh there you go. Right, we have three stored faults, not got many actual fault sort of frequencies, so we have 14 for the pneumatic supply red line. Four for the defective brake demand via CAN, and three for a power supply. So I don't know if we can, if we hit the I button, we should be able to see when these last occurred. No, we can't, because it's not saved it. So the ECU is not actually picked up on that. Aye, so like that, so the defective brake one, its last occurrence was the 23rd of the 9th. So that's an old fault. The pneumatic supply. 30th the 11th, so that's probably the one that we're going to be looking at. Now I'm going to jump in the middle of this video to talk about our two new bobble hats. So we've got this beanie hat, it's just your blue one, your red and your white beanie, uh, bobble, sorry, the logo. So they're all beach field hats, so they're very good quality. This one's just your beanie material inside and out. And then you've got your knitted one, which is also beach field. So you've got your two tone, so a darker blue, light blue. Again, your logo, another beach field one, but inside this one, you've got a fur lining, and that sort of goes around your ears and your head, and I can assure you, that keeps your head absolutely roasting, but this is one I wear to work, it's a wee bit easier, just, it's not as hot on your head, but aye, there are two hats, if you head over to the website, www.thescottishtech.co.uk, you can grab yourself a hat, and if you buy a hat, you get a discount off the stickers, so I'll put a link in the description, head over there, Grab your cell hat. Now my sales pitch is done, we go back to the faults. So, I'm thinking it's the pneumatic supply, 
and to be honest with you I'm not 100% sure what that's going to be so we're going to come out here go into our measurements and then I'm going to connect the Susie's up to the van and we will see sort of if we can check the check the supply pressures so supply pressure we want to see the live data right now it is obviously sitting low I've not got the compressor connected so we'll go and connect that up and then hopefully this should come up into the green Susie coupled up at this side I need to plug the airline into the compressor turn that from exhaust to pressurise and our gauge has started to go up we have to fill the compressor up we've not got enough air in it so my suspicions with this is I think somebody's hooked up to the trailer they've not had enough air in the system or something they've tried to drive it and it's basically pinged a fault on because it's not got enough air supply so that's what I think it is but this will hopefully confirm it uh, if it's just that it's just a case of clearing the faults and it should be fine if it's not that, we're obviously going to have to look in. It's probably going to be the ECU, maybe the sensor inside that is faulty, but um, aye, we'll just need to wait and see. We'll see what this says when the compressor builds up. Now, looking at that supply pressure going up, we're nearly up at about six bar over there, and we're just sitting about four. So I've got a suspicion this might have a faulty supply pressure sensor built into the ECU and that's what's causing our fault so I, I think that's the route we're going to go for here, I think this might need an ECU but we'll double check it once the compressor blows off and then we'll just compare it and see what it says. Compressor's now blown off so our supply voltage is about 7, 7 bar roughly is what is on that and we're showing, aye, no, we're showing 7 here now. So that was also just a bit slow in getting to the ECU and building up. Try so what we're showing on this is probably about the same as the scrutineer, so I will say that is fine. Like I say, I think it's just been a case of somebody's tried to drive it away and no had they are built up enough and they've maybe dragged the trailer along a wee bit. But um alright, so if we clear the faults. In fact, before we clean the faults, I'm gonna do an end of line test. So if I do this end of line test, it basically runs through everything on the trailer and it should pass if the trailer is completely fine so you need to clear all the faults first oh, which helps if I come out of that to do that now if I go into that I think we should still have our stored faults I right, we've still got them so if we clear these clear them for the memory all cleared then we want to go into not maintenance calibration no nope, not calibration where was that parameters system checks end of line test hit the tick so we want all the options we want to go through absolutely everything tick again now in order to perform it basically just tells you what it needs to meet so we'll hit the tick so I need to go and jack the wheel up because now it will tell you you have to rotate each wheel soak for 5 seconds whatever and it will test them so let's go and get a jack jack this up Let's get ourselves under here. Lock the middle first. Then, jack. So, we only need to jack up the middle axle because, I don't know if you can see actually, the middle axle is the only ones that has sensors that are coming down the pipes. So, the middle axle is on this trailer anyway. Other trailers will be different, but this trailer is the only one with sensors in the middle axle. So, we need to jack that up so the end of line test can detect if the sensors are reading. There we go. Off the ground. Right, now we want to hit the tick. So I need to go and find sensor 1A, turn that wheel. So I think. Oh. Right, so we need to spin this for about 5 seconds. It's now asking for 1B. Which 1B is this side? Which is your driver's side in this case. Now it's read both the sensors, we have green ticks. So we hit the tick for that one. Right, the next one is a stability test in your modulators and sensors. So hit tick again. Now I need to spin one A again and it should apply the brake. Get this turning. There we go. And we come round to the driver's side and spin B. Should do the same. There we go. Now again, 
we've got our green ticks, that's what we're after. We hit tick for that, we'll see what's next. Now the next one is asked us to release the parking brake, put in our wheel chalk, which we've done. So, hit tick, right, supply pressure. I need to get it over six and a half bar, so I'm going to have to start the compressor up again. I had an eagle-eyed viewer in one of my other videos. I had an eagle-eyed viewer in one of my other videos that picked up on me not wearing safety glasses when I was using a drill or a wire brush. I do have some, and I promise I will start using them. Right, so we passed all our pressures, we got all our ticks there. Now we move on to the next bit, so it resets the system after each one. So, we'll wait until this processes. It's now just processing sort of all our data. So I don't know how long that takes, but at the end of this it should hopefully I think I can't remember, it's been a while since I've done one. But at the end of this it should hopefully pop up basically saying passed or failed. There we go. So it's generating the report. So this is a report and it basically just goes through everything we've done. So it shows you all your results to each sort of stage. So like also we had the supply pressure. I had to reset that a few times because I hit the wrong button, but we got there in the end. I think our coal ass, that was brake pedal release. Just shows you all that information. So we've passed our end of line test. We still have no faults in the memory, so that is that good to go. Now, before we shut the gel test down, we want to save that file because that will get asked for, for the breakdown company. So you hit tick. That will generate that and save it, and then we can just shut on the gel test down. Right, we need to make sure we put the handbrake back on, and then go let this axle back down, get all our stuff out, unconnect our Susie's, tidy up. So that is us all done, unfortunately there was nothing to fix but I showed you the full process of how we diagnose it, it obviously had no faults, uh, well stored faults sorry, we checked the occurrences, so the last occurrence was like over 5 days ago I think, um, aye, and then we've done that full end of line test, so if that end of line test passes like it did, you've got no faults, if something was to fail it would pop up in that test and then we could go and sort of diagnose that but yep, yeah, anyway that is us all done. Head over to the store, make sure you get yourself a hat and some stickers. But thank you for watching once again. Please remember to hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, like, whatever, all that sort of stuff. And uh, aye, I'll see you next week.